And there we go. And uh, Brandy, go ahead. Welcome once again. We have our next speaker and trailblazer, Zenka Kara. She is the founder of the Wisdom Age Metaverse. Today's talk is all about the launch of the dream machine and the impact NFT and the regenerative DeFi crypto seeds. So what if the world was put to the most passionate people in the world to work? What if the design was reusable templates to power the best of the future? So Zanko Caro is going to create that system and bringing that to us today. And Zanko Caro, thank you so much for being here. It's an honor to have you on the show. Great, thanks so much. Um, thanks for having me today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share some slides. As Molly said, I'm a systems architect, uh, which means that I try to look at the whole system and see what is needed. Uh, and I'm also a futurist, so I'm really looking toward the edge of technology to see what we can do uh, to improve our future. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, bring up my slides here. Okay. And I'm also going to turn off my video. There seems to be a slight delay here. All right. So today, like uh, we just talked about, we're going to be talking about some important things, namely passion, right? Passion is actually something that happens in our brains. Uh, it creates a, uh, a chemical reaction, a dopamine rush. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, the work of um, the Flow G Genome Project, but they talk about how Stephen Kotler talks about how, you know, when, when investors invest in someone, they look for passionate people. They look for curiosity because curiosity is the thing that's going to get you up every morning um, to, to um, with your mind racing toward what you want to create, right? And, and it's never quite done. So we're in an interesting time period in the world. Um, it's kind of like... Um, like tabula rasa, right? We have we have a blank slate here. So what are we going to do with this? Because in a sense, we're all in a hero's journey together right now. Um, we're at the climax, right? So what are we going to do with our hero's journey, right? We've we've got we know um, you know we know what the challenges are ahead. So so what are we going to do? And obviously, you know, uh, George talked about this too. You know, we're about to enter a global renaissance. And this is some of the technologies that can help us do that. I want to talk a little bit about trends. As a, as a strategist, I'm always looking to see what's, what are the trends? What are the biggest trends out there? And we're going to talk about a few of these today. So again, as George said, you know, we cannot underestimate this factor. Like he's saying in 10 years, this is, you know, everything's gonna flip, right? So we're, we're, we need to account for that in everything that we do in all of our decisions. It's as if like Christmas happened and we just got all the gifts, right? All the tools. He talked about the lifeboats of the, you know, the internet and the cell phone. Well, we also have XR and NFTs and blockchains. So, so what are we gonna do with this Christmas, right? The other major trend that's happening in the world today is everything started to get human centered, right? It's like patient led care. You can't heal yourself in, unless you want to be healed, right? Unless you're taking charge, right? Same thing with student led education. Everything they're doing now is, is based on that, like guiding people through their own curiosity as the way and human centered design, right? You can design something at the top, but if it doesn't work for the end user, that's not good, right? So the third trend that I want to talk about is this idea that no matter how inconvenient it is, we have to realize that everything is interconnected, right? We once had this idea that we could work in, this, in silos and really come together and figure this out. But the truth of the matter is, is that if you, you know, if your body is, is, you know, is sick in one place, it's going to throw your whole equilibrium off, right? So if we have a problem in one part of the world, it's going to affect everyone else. So we really have to think of 
you know, the whole system and how everything's working. So that's why gap theory is so important. When you take a snapshot of the full picture, what is missing, right? We're going to identify this. We're also going to talk about kind of phenomenology. That's something that's been so incredibly fascinating to me is when I look at statistical data, what, where, what is the outliers? What are the things that don't make any sense? And Burning Man created an outlier effect. They, they, they nailed joy, right? I mean, people went crazy. This was a week in their life where they could do anything and they could ride these bikes, they could wear whatever they wanted. And that was incredibly contagious. And it's also a lesson for us. You know, we can build a dystopia if we just put efficiency and functionality in the future, right? We need to bring in that joy. The other thing is, is that this is an all hands on deck. You know, we're heading a thousand miles per hour into this future, this unknown future. And we've got the governments working hard to figure this out. We've got the private sectors figuring this out, but the individuals aren't really yet invited to the table. They need more support than a company that's organized, that's structured. It's like, hey guys, we're all going this way, right? But individuals need that support. Um, to, to, in order to, to, to create, right? And so we need to build these tools for individuals to really um, contribute in a new way because we are all going to be needed, right? And the last phenomenon that I want to talk about is the X prize effect. You know, this is one of the biggest ones. It's like, how could this happen, right? So they put citizens, small, tiny teams on doing the biggest things like a reusable launch, you know, rocket launches. And what happened is they realized that small, that people with no money, but just time and knowledge were competing against massive companies and NASA and everybody else, right? So we realized that knowledge and time is really, really inset, uh, um, important, even just with a little bit of money. So when we looked at how are we going to build this, this blank slate NFT, what if we could create the perfect NFT, what would it be, right? Well, we wanted to create impact. You know, you see these like $69 million, you know, um, NFTs being sold, but we, we need to put that money toward world building, right? We're, we're in the process of laying the rails that are going to allow this renaissance to, to, to flourish, right? So we, we don't want to be, you know, hoarding and saving the money. We want to be putting it into impact, right? Because what we do now is going to have a big effect later. We also know that experience is king right now, right? We can have these transformational experiences. Everybody wants, wants to have these experiences that, that expand their worldview, right? And we also know that NFTs need to become more sustainable. It's, it's really, really important. So we designed the NFT to work with the Seeds crypto. Now, the Seeds is the conscious currency. It's a regenerative cryptocurrency. I'm going to share in the chat when we get to the uh, Q&A um, the link so you can learn more about it. Um, but it's a phone app that works kind of like PayPal and Venmo, where you can pay your friends in crypto with no transaction fees, right? So it's incredible. They have two apps. One's a wallet and one's a passport, right? And the passport is used for voting and all sorts of things. So what they've done is incredible. They've created this zero fees exchange, right? Then they've created an incredible community that's coherent, right? So they've got people from all over the world working toward a sustainable, um, uh, planet and that, you know, it's invite only again right now. So again, I'll send you some seeds. I'll get you started with an invite. Um, I'll share my email, but, but creating a community that has a very, um, tight culture, um, every interaction that you have with them on the, on the discord or whatever has that really caring, loving, open, let's all do this together. Incredible, um, you know, feeling, and it's really important. And with a small group of people like that, you can really cause um, a big wave and it can really help people self-organize. 
The other thing that they've solved is DeFi, decentralized finance governance, right? You know, governance is always like the messy thing. We talk about wanting these horizontal, you know, companies and everything, but the devil's in the details, right? How do you do that? Well, Seeds has created these grants that they're giving away, two types of grants. And then the people that actually own Seeds are the ones that get to vote using the app as to where the money goes. So they've already modeled this incredible, difficult problem in a really, really beautiful way. They have 88 countries, 450 organizations. So again, all of our NFT money, whether we put, we, it, whether you get it through OpenSea or Rarible, it's all gonna be put into seeds before it's distributed to the dreamers. So what is the dream machine? What's the idea behind it? The idea is that we start to put lifestyle and civilization redesign in a Git, in a GitHub. And for those of you that's not familiar with GitHub, right? It's an open source templates, like reusable instruction manuals, right? For doing things that we, you know, that we all want to do that are cutting edge that don't exist. We're on the Rarible and the OpenSea platform. So you can use, um, you know, I don't know how many people have a wallet yet. This uses the MetaMask wallet. And as um, Yev said, like, get in there, do this. If you haven't figured out how to connect a wallet or send money from Coinbase to your wallet, you know, with the send, you know, it's a trip, you know what I mean? You gotta get in there and try it. It's um, a learning, you'll be glad you did. You might not be an OG, like they said, you'll be an early adopter, but it's super fun. Um, and I wanna share a couple of the dreams that are in the dream machine. Um, and this is an NFT. And I guess you got the reference there, so the art reference there, right? Um, that artwork was created by Marquita Quiroga, and it's for a project with three creators in Argentina to actually build a sustainable hydroponic vegetable garden for a small town in an outlying city, uh, outlying of Cordoba, right? They've already built the prototypes. When they're, when all um, five of their NFTs sell, they will be building this entire template, this instruction man manual for any town around the world to build a um, vegetable garden, complete with cell phone ordering for the local community, right? Local creation, local distribution. The second uh, NFT we have is called Alive. And the idea is to really inspire art collectors to invest in living artists, right? We are going through this crazy backflip right now in society and it cannot be put into words, but artists help us do that. They help explain that. And this NFT is so incredible. This again is Marakita, who's done all of the artwork so far in the dream machine. It will be opening up, but she really created this initial, you know, heart stamp on the original pieces. And um, her NFT comes with incredible experiences. So. She has four NFTs in a bundle, and once all four are sold, um, she will be painting an impact mural. So you'll be paying for that as part of your uh, as part of the NFT, and you'll be getting an original piece of physical artwork that you get to choose. So the first per the first in the series is already sold, so that's gone. But the second one will get the next season. So they'll be able to look at her artwork and say, okay, I'm spring, I get to choose from her spring collection, which piece of artwork um, I want. And in turn, you're support supporting her uh, for $6,000 in total is, is the four NFTs for an entire year of her dedicating her life to her art, to raising our consciousness, to sharing her gifts with the world. And this is the incredible NFT that she's created for us. we're going to share in the dream machine is a project that I'm working on called the interdimensional travel agency. You know, we talk about these, all these restrictions on travel, right? 
But really, um, we have agency, as Nadi would call, right here in our own bodies, right? To have these, whether it's an out-of-body experience or a float tank experience with VR in outer space or Lucia light, which is pictured here, which is which is light therapy that was developed to activate your pineal gl gland, right? You know, no need for substances or anything, right? Um, or Adam travel, um, Adam Apollo giving a um, astral travel class. Uh, all of these experiences are incredible ways for us to explore our consciousness. And uh, it's, it's a great project and it's a citizen science to really collect information on the visible world. I mean, we know a lot about rocks at this point, so let's figure out the stuff that we don't know about. And here's the, the one of the NFTs in this series so you can get a feel for it. Again, I'll share these in the chat when I stop the screen sharing, but you can go to Rarible or OpenSea. There's things for every budget. Um, Nadi is going to be giving a class about accessing your um, Merkava, your your um, you know uh, your inner fields, right? And that's a hundred dollars. So there's all different um, price ranges for you guys to get started with and to support these dreams. So again, when when we designed this, the Dream Machine Impact NFT, we, we decided not to do an auction, right? We wanted to have fixed prices because we have this philosophy that enough is enough, right? We have these, these budgets and it costs, you know, X amount to do X thing, right? And that's all it takes. So we, we want to be frugal with our money and really, um, and really just use what we have to create what, what we have in our minds, right? Um, and these are designed, NFTs are designed to do it together. So the, the experiences and the dreams don't unlock until every single um, uh, NFT in the series is, is, is bought. So if there's four, all four get bought. So this is a chance for you, if you're passionate about a project, to network, to call your friends, hey, hey let's, let's turn on this dream for, the, for humanity. Because again, these are, these are templates that be, can be reused by other muralists or other people that are making gardens or other people. You know, the travel agency is going to be a nexus. It's going to be a marketplace for all the people that do these things for people, whether it's breath work or whatever, right? We're creating these infrastructure that support us all. And again, yeah, we wanted to make it into a template that the world could use. So we're not doing these as one-offs. These are ideas that um, anybody who has a dream can grab an artist and grab some people with crypto and just make these dreams come true. So we hope that you um, have a lot of fun at this conference and ex exploring NFTs and new technology because it really is about passion and curiosity combined. And Again, as George said, you know, it's not about tech. It's about how tech systems work with people systems. So this, we really tried to make this marriage come true in this project um, because um, both of them can come together to create our co our collective hero's journey. So we invite you into that, and uh, we invite you to pair up and live your legacy. That was wonderful. Thank that you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. So I'm I'm very interested in how do the oh I have an echo and it's not me. <laughs> so I I'm very curious how the artists are going to um collaborate and work together can you expand on that well the idea is that nfts obviously are you know they i think you guys said earlier today like the artists are at the heart of this nft movement right so in, in our sense our collaboration was with marikita right she's the the first artist in this alive template that can be reused by other artists but we encourage people to to use artists to create these beautiful NFTs because they're beautiful and they're valuable. They'll be resold, right? They're beautiful in and of itself. We've added experiences. We've added impact through the Seeds Crypto. But at the heart, they're these beautiful 
there's these these beautiful creations right that have their life so we encourage people to team up with artists um, as they explain their dream to the world that is wonderful i can't see your video and i'm wondering why <laughs> sorry i was having i didn't want a repeat of what we had earlier with the, with the bandwidth so Oh, no, wonderful. Hi, good to see your face. I just want to make sure everybody can see your bright, smiling face. So um, for these NFTs, um, how did you go about the uh, the minting process? You said they're on Rarible, so I'm assuming that means Ethereum. Was it on layer two or was it regular Ethereum? And um, how did you go about deciding both what to include and also the different levels? And I love that you included something for everyone. Yeah. So, you know, we, you know, we looked at both um, OpenSea and Rarible as platforms, and we were attracted to, to both of them for different reasons. Um, and it's incredible because in the, in the three weeks and whatever, the lead up to this conference as we were creating them, the features have changed, right? OpenSea just got a ton of money, right? They've got all these programmers changing everything. You know, same thing with Rarible. We noticed that they had live auctions. You know what I mean? All this stuff is changing. But one thing that we didn't, that I didn't like about OpenSea was that they were they were wrapping the ETH, and it was it seemed expensive for me because we want all the money to go to these creations, right? These real world impact projects, templates that can be reused. We don't want it to get caught in, you know, gas fees and minting fees and all that stuff. Um, at the time we're creating them last week and minting them, OpenSea was not allowing series as well, right? It's not gonna be adding in a feature and we couldn't find out from Reddit when that was gonna happen. So, and the Rarible, um, the gas fees were only about $75 after we paid the 300 for the general umbrella of the collection, right? So that was really affordable because we're thinking, wow, we're, you know, we're just at $175 just on gas for these things or passing that on to the buyer. Why not just pay this smaller fee, bundle them together again so that people network in order to close, to wrap the entire dream together. And then you can also publish them if you use the same wallet, which, you know, the MetaMask wallet, then you can republish them on OpenSea. It just automatically goes over there. As well. Nice. So you get the benefit of multiple platforms. Yeah. That's wonderful. So, so aside from purchasing everything, what is something else that we can do to support you? Well, I think it's just... You know, I, I was in technology for so long in, in XR, extended reality and augmented reality. And I would go to these conferences and people would give these speeches and they didn't even know what they were talking about. Like I got the feeling that these executives hadn't even been putting on the headset to try the experiences. So what you can do is get in there, right? Get your hand, you know, don't sit on the sidelines, right? really get in there and do this, you know, set up your wallet, write down your, you know what I mean? It's a whole thing, you know, write down your codes and, and really just explore and continue to think about um, what we can do again, you know, to, to, to engage people, to use their energy, their precious time into creating the world that we want now, because we've got five years or whatever we've got to really put these foundational things in place. So seeds, for example, it's a great example of how they did tabla rasa. They said, well, if we could do anything with crypto, we would do this. So you don't want to bring all of the things that you didn't like about the old system into the new system. So it's very important to support the creators that are thinking about how we eventually want to do this, right? And getting behind them and supporting them. So I encourage you to, yeah, really find, seek out the people who you think are going to have a long-term impact and support their work. And, and Brandy asked if there was a way to get children involved, because it seems to me like when, when my son, he's now almost 18, but when he was four, he was doing yoga in preschool. And I was like, that's pretty forward thinking. I mean, I'm from the Bay area. So of course we were doing yoga in, in at four years old in preschool. Um, but I, I think that getting children and youth involved early 
um, could also help set the culture for the next generation. So how can children get involved? Well, you know, it's interesting because it's like Greta, you know, Greta was such this like choking reminder that um, that they have to have a seat at the table. So do our grandmothers and grandfathers, right? They all of this wisdom, the full spectrum wisdom has to be at the table for this redesign, right? And children often see the world in in ways that we don't. And they're also very, you know, it's very interesting the the coming generations, you know, it's like they don't want money so much as they want um you know a lifestyle that it gives them more freedom you know they want they, they won't work for a company that doesn't have a social impact it's like if this is all about money i'm not working you know it's like so they're different you know and so i think that's great that the idea is that it's kind of like a free-for-all like burning man it's like bring your gifts bring your passion to the dream machine right and let's get these projects funded um, and and we would love to have a project with children. I think that I think that'd be amazing, right? What do they want to do? What do they think is needed? How much is it going to cost? You know. Thank you, thank you so much. This has been absolutely fascinating uh, today. Uh, hearing from you and uh, Adrian, thank you for the great Q and A. Um, Zinka, I'm so fortunate to be in a mastermind with you and your brilliance. You are really going places and you've uh, put together a platform here that can really help others uh, achieve their goals as well. So thank you so much for all your help too uh, with AI Showbiz. Uh, you've been such a help to me. I can't thank you enough. And um, <clears throat> I guess the final thing is, uh, if people would like to help you directly with what you're doing, what, how do they reach you? Yeah, so you can go to rarible.com slash the dream machine uh, to find the NFTs. And you can also reach out to me at Zenka at Zenka.org. And I just want to say, Molly, um, you know, you are the definition of passion. You know, it's like the energy and your enthusiasm, it's just, it's so contagious and it brings out the best in people and you have the capability to accomplish such powerful cutting edge pioneering big dreams and things because passion is is such um a big trait for you so thanks for sharing your passion with us today and putting all this together for us to learn oh, really amazing thank you Sanka. thank you so much uh, with that i'm going to